Let's give this a try. Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. It's been about one month that I've been having difficulty with my account because I've been deployed to Kuwait for six months. I guess YouTube thought that my relocation was suspicious and locked down my account. It's taken over one month dealing with tech support, and I will say that I've had some truly great support and some actually great actual people, both at Curse and at YouTube forums, that have helped. You've also been great sending support and confirming that videos were not showing up. So during the process, YouTube assessed that a hacker uploaded videos and that I was compromised. They deleted about five of my videos, including the one tonight that I'm going to re-upload as a test for the system. My plan is pretty simple after that, which is to upload daily until I've caught up. If you'd want to support, please watch the videos when they pop up and share so I can help get the numbers up and get the algorithm suggesting my content again. I'm going to be home in August, and I hope that this is the last time I have to deal with the bot. So also, please stay tuned for a full video on the backstory of what actually happened, what was done to fix it, and of course, as you come to expect from the channel, some suggestions to Google on how this could be made better for the content creator who always wears it and loses in the long run. So here is Inside Star Citizen, titled Let Them Fight from a Month Ago. If you see this video in your subscription feed, please post so that I know that I'm no longer shadow banned. Thank you very much for your support, and of course, thank you for your patience. Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifar. It's late Saturday where I am, but I have some time to break down Inside Star Citizen titled Let Them Fight on what it took to get the AI cap ships into Xenothreat. Here's what you need to know about the show. John Crew said that planning was massive before adding cap ships into Xenothreat. His main concerns were to not fall into the regular traps of launching a ship that was totally OP or to ensure that it wouldn't easily be killed by a solo ship. Turrets and guns needed to be assessed as one homogenous balance, which added a bit to the complexity. This was not the first time we had seen the Idris fight, but it was the first time that the systems and AI worked properly. The event was initially defined with the developers setting up the required behavior of the cap ships. They said several times through the show that the initial balance was a major concern. They added a wider range of actions that the turrets can perform, including attacking incoming missiles or torpedoes, plus enemy bombers in range were prioritized over fighters that were in range. Countermeasures were the next challenge as they'd never been deployed on this scale before. They tried to ensure that visually they would be impressive and effective against incoming weapon systems. One of the ways that they were able to balance the main railgun on the Idris was to ensure that the ship would focus first on larger targets and work to achieve a clean front firing solution. The Javelin on the other hand would try to maintain broadside to the threat to use its wall of turrets. Once flight was sorted out, they wanted to ensure that the feel was dialed in. The devs say that they've been watching us play with excitement to see how the community tries to take on the threat. We break it, they fix it, we break it again, they try to fix it, and we break it. John reminded us that there are weapon systems that still haven't been put online, so there's still much more to come. Signed Distance Fields, or SDF, were next, and these are the newest versions of the shield modeling being rolled out into Star Citizen. SDF shield tech is being tested on the cap ships before it's pushed the rest of the fleet. The legacy shield tech drew a bubble around the ship, but the new SDF shield creates a detailed mesh around the hull to conform to its shape. If you lose a wing or tail, the SDF mesh adjusts to take that into consideration. SDF also gives the player instant visual feedback. The developers also have full control over how far the mesh is from the hull, and then by linking it to a volumetric value, the resulting total effect is the work that we see. There was some trivia. The very first implementation of SDF tech was launched actually as part of the re-entry fire effect, allowing the flames to hug and conform to the hull. Once this background tooling is complete, the devs are going to be free to add variation for alien ships and other possibilities. That's it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.